My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. To Jesus, He owns power and might. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sing with every force you have. Let's shout it to Him again. Power and might belongs to Him. If it goes, Shadahas. Oh, 
Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Lift up your two hands to Jesus. Kola Hagadas. Kena Hagada Gezesas. Lift up your voice and declare that he controls power. He owns power. He's a source of power. Lift up your voice and exalt the one who controls all power, all might. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. We love you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we exalt you. Holy Spirit, our welcome. We magnify you, precious Holy Spirit. The entrance of that word give a light, it give an understanding to the simple. By your special grace, this blessed day I reach forward into the very heart of my hearers. And I make eternal deposit in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you for the release of your power, the release of your light, the release of your might. We thank you for the release of mighty angels. In this service, we release. Kelehanga dagahas, koka ha kelehanga sos, kola mahaga dikiza sas, koka la gata ketelega has, ikha ha, kona gati liketeke, kona gati liki hakas, koka gaga likas, kana kili kiha. Like a dicky house, like fire balls, Kihaka, like a genie has us, Loma Gilina has, Lema Nogi has us, Legi Gigu Hayas, Ringa Veliga has. There are angels all over this place. The glory of God is here. All you expect today is happening now. Just release your spirit. In the next few minutes, God is with you. You are the great. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. You are the great. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. You are the great I am. Hey, Hallelujah, 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 Oh Hallelujah. You are the mighty, the mighty God. You are the great I am. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Which is his power? The greater 
good news is that he's already here we might close the service earlier than you think because whatever you expect is happening now it doesn't matter whether you are watching us online or in person you don't want to leave this place the same way you came because I see the impartations of angels some of you you feel like vomiting go ahead and vomit some of you like, there will be a ball of fire in your heart some of you is, is, is fresh joy and in this atmosphere there is healing some of you too much will leave your body right now and anyhow you know how to pray pray today anyhow you know how to worship god some of you the tongue of god god is causing you to speak in tongues don't be shy release your spirit 
Ayanda de Dehish. Lehenda Gish. Ha. Na 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 Deliverance is here. Don't be a spectator today. I beg you. I beg you. Don't be a spectator. Today might be the encounter you've longed for all your life. It might be the moment you long for all your life. Permanent deliverances are happening. Permanent deliverances are happening. Permanent deliverances. Just talk to God. Please close your eyes. Talk to God. Go ahead and talk to the master. The Holy Spirit right where you are. He has us. Close your eyes. Talk to him. Encounters. Some of you, you are crying. You are crying. There's a release. No, 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 no. Go ahead. That's all we came to do. Something is happening to you already. That is all. Don't wait for anything. Hey, hey, hey. Finger of God, I judge them today. Now, what did you say? All right, Jesus died and purchased them. You have no hold and right over her. It doesn't matter that he came from that family. From today, I decree that he belonged to the Christ family. He can ask the handedest, can the 
Keneki tande kitesh. Peni manahas. Pengingi dahandes. I strike you. Fire. All of you. Clap for Jesus. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit, He is right where you are. He is not far. You might be watching us online. This is the day you want. That's what we are going to do. If you are waiting for a special time, this is the special moment. There are impartations, there are healings. Lift up your two hands. But in that one being are angels. There are angels every spot in this place, online, in person. There are angels in that house. A heaviness has entered that room watching us online. There's a heaviness which is a tangible, tangible, glorious presence. Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing. I hear the angels say, as we sing, receive an impartation. The angels are singing, Hosanna in the high. Oh, the angels are singing, lift it up. Hosanna in the high. The angels are singing. Hosanna in the the angels are singing. Hosanna in the highs. The angels are singing. Hosanna in the angels. The angels are singing. Hosanna. see angels and they are holding certain bowls. I look around the bowl and they said, hunger for God. God is bringing you a place of deep appetite. A deep hunger for God. 
and it's for everyone whoever wants it you can take it we are here to drink the deep waters of God we are drinking of the deep wells of the Holy Spirit is the deep wells of God that is the answer to every question of life the deep wells of God as you are even breathing in that glory something tangible is happening over your life something tangible is happening it's a great work it does in you help her, help her. it's glory Let it go now. Get two chairs and put it here. And then lie down. Get two chairs and put them on. The hand of God is upon him mightily. Yes. 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 Angels are working something tangible. Just monitor her, please. Look, she's pregnant. That's why we are doing that. But angels are working a great work. It's a great work. In this service, make sure you receive something of God. Make sure you receive something. Whatever it is you long for. It's in the atmosphere. Rehege de Giazas. Rehege de Giazas. Rehege de Giazas. Konananani atatatas. Konananas. Somebody who came in the service with pains from your waist on your right leg down, but that pain is leaving right now. It leaves. The pain is leaving, never to come again in the name of Jesus. I see a couple you are watching and you held your hands together believing god for an impartation and the hand of god is upon you in that house in that room there's a visitation for you lego hadaki has us reggae velira hadadadas reggae velira dadadas konanana nina nana has monozi has Somebody, God is touching your generation. A hand is coming over you and it's going into your generation. Make sure you get something. Your generation. Your generation.
we thank you Holy Spirit we thank you for your great mighty presence we honor you greatly Holy Spirit we give you glory we give you praise some people God is bringing to your mind a conviction he's telling you go and apologize I hear a lot of things are happening on the individual level because that mm, thank you Jesus we'll have the Holy Spirit we give you praise 1st Corinthians 10 verse 1 thank you Jesus 1st Corinthians chapter 10 the verse number 1 Still be conscious of God's presence and God's spirit. Because that is all you need. The Bible said it's not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit. And that verse is not for pastors, it's for every believer. That this world you need an empowerment from God. And that empowerment comes by the Holy Spirit. He said you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And thank God that Holy Spirit is upon you right here whatever it is you want please believe me it is the holy ghost you need because by him you can fix every area of your life and as we sit in this place we can close this service and i believe that there has been a rubble on your life moreover brethren i will know that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea now paul is talking about how when Moses and the Israelites, they walked in the wilderness. The Bible said, physically there was a tangible pillar of cloud and pillar of fire. And he said that all of them were under that cloud. Next verse. And they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And they did eat the spiritual meat. Same. They ate the same meat. Spiritual meat. And they drink of the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was crashed. So in the realm of the spirit, there are clouds. There are atmospheres. Go to Isaiah 4 verse 5. Today, God instructed me to make sure I lay my hand upon you, anointing you with the oil. And you just want to be conscious. It is not the oil which is the matter because you can buy that oil in Walmart. But when you put that oil in Walmart upon you, and this one touches you, your life, it's not the same. So it's not the oil. It's the spirit of God by means of the oil. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud. Did you hear that? When we assemble like this, physically, when you look up, try and look up if you can see a cloud. You can't see a physical cloud. But God said that in the realm of the spirit, there's a cloud. And this morning, the cloud is here. It's a tangible cloud. I pray that you can see it's a misty, tangible cloud. And the clouds, they release stuff. So, if I were you, instead of thinking about my problem or your problem, look at the cloud. Because in that cloud, upon us this morning, a cloud and a smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory, there shall be a defense. Some of you are going to leave this place today and people will see tangible clouds over your head. You go home, go to work and they will tell you you have changed. Not that spiritually they, they can see that there's something about you. Last Thursday when we closed the service thinking we are closed, the service they didn't close. We stayed here for over one hour. It took, it took only God for us to end the service. When, when we closed the service and we greeted everyone and everyone left God was not done. And that one, it was just, we couldn't just stop the service. Can you give me just the picture? We couldn't show you the video another time. It's long. It is just to tell us that this is after service. This is not during the service. You know, I'm not wearing my shoe in that picture. This one was not controlled by man. People were seeing literal light. I don't have the time to read what was happening. It was just amazing. Now, I'm showing this to tell you that as a church and as a ministry, a new cloud has rested upon us. It doesn't have to be on a Sunday or on a Thursday. I 
at home, wherever you go, know that there is a tangible cloud. Some people couldn't drive home, so I had to beg people to drive them to their house. Then they will come back and pick their cars. This is the dimension I'm talking about. Tangible. And that presence is still in this place. If we decide to sit here for 30 minutes, you have been super blessed. Now go back to 1 Corinthians 10 for me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We go to verse 4. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 4. And they did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, I had to read that verse to you because at times when the atmosphere is there, the cloud is there, you can be under it and you will not benefit from it. God's blessing and God's power is for everyone. But your consciousness is all it requires. Your attention and your belief. That is all. So you might be believing God for healing, whatever. Just believe and be conscious. The same power people are getting blessed. Somebody will be watching us and say, hurry up and let's close. But they were all under the same cloud. And yet, some, some were blessed, some were not. And I pray that for the next five to ten minutes, as we lay hands upon everyone, that cloud will rest upon you. It will not be a good feeling we came to have, but something tangible will change in your life. I'm praying that that tumor, that growth in your body will live now. In the name of Jesus. That limitation, that stumbling block will be broken for good by reason of the anointing. In the scriptures, in the book of Exodus 20, 30 verse 25, when Moses was building the tabernacle, God said, Whatever you are going to build and whatever you are going to do in the tabernacle, make sure you do it after the pattern in heaven. So what was in the tabernacle on the earth? Moses was watching it in heaven and he was building it. That's what the Bible said. What they used to do in the tabernacle on the earth was what Moses saw. And one of the things God told them to do was to get an anointing oil. And thou shalt make it an, holy, an oil of holy ointment. An ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. That's a big word. But it's after the art of the perfumer. It shall be an holy anointing oil. And what will happen? He said, and you shall anoint the tabernacle of the congregation. There it. And the ark of the testimony. And the table. And all the vessels. And the candlestick and its vessels. And the altar of incense. So you see, it was God who told them to anoint not human beings first but everything can be anointed. Did you hear me? So you can anoint your car. You can anoint your shoes. You can anoint your hands. So everything can be anointed. It is God teaching Moses. Moses never knew. It was God who taught him. And he said, and the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels and the lava and his foot and thou shalt sanctify them. So it means when the anointing comes upon a thing or anyone, it is sanctified. It is set apart. It is separated. Today, as the anointing of you comes over your life, you are set apart. Can I tell you something? When the oil came upon the table, the table did not fall under the power. When the oil came on the vessels, the vessels did not fall under the power. When it came on the human beings, some fell, some did not fell. I have to tell you that to let you know whether today you fall or you shake, know that by the reason of the oil, you are sanctified. I pray you believe what I tell you. The moment it comes upon you, just know that you are being set apart, sanctified, separated from your people, from your family. You are elevated to a new position in this life. And they may be most holy. Whatsoever touches them shall be holy. Now, do you understand what he said? He says that when this oil comes upon me, me, I have become holy. Then, bring me your phone. Touch me with your phone. Whatever touches me has become holy too. Amen. You didn't get it. I don't think you got it. He said, when the oil comes upon me, I have been sanctified and be made. Let's read. And they shall and thou shalt sanctify them that they may be most holy. He puts a colon there. 
whatsoever touches them shall be holy. As you go home, you are going to touch your bed. You are going to touch your bank account. You are going to touch something as a point of contact. And the moment you touch it, it's going to be most holy. You are going to touch your children. You are going to touch that immigration document. It's going to be sanctified. And that shall sanctify them. And they shall be most holy. Next verse. And that shall anoint Aaron and his son. So you see, he anointed the elements, the things. Then he anointed the human being. So this oil can anoint anything and anyone. And the moment it touches a thing or a person, that person becomes most holy. And that shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. The fact that you'll be sanctified today, I have no doubt. But my only concern is that if you believe it happened, I repeat, that something happened to you or, or happened to you today, I have no doubt. But so that when you leave this place, you don't forget who you have become. If you are clapping, we'll look out for Jesus. Because many times, people have received impartations. They have been sanctified. And it, it's never changed. But they don't know who they are. That's what I keep telling The foundation for all expression. Who? Never forget an encounter. Never, 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 never. Now, somebody might say that they used to just anoint in the Old Testament. In the New Testament too, they used to anoint because it was an instruction. The disciples of Jesus did anoint. Mark 6 verse 13. Oh, I love Jesus. And they cast out many devils and anointed with Are you sure you are here? And anointed with many that were sick and healed them. So when the anointing came upon sick people, they got healed. And James 5 verse 14, look at what he said. We are not worshipping an anointing oil. It's the Holy Spirit we worship. It's God the Father we worship. But he has a means by which he will bless us. And one of them is the anointing. Is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with so the anointing oil we anoint people is not something of the old testament suddenly people have now begun to distinguish the old testament consciously there's nothing wrong with that one but i had to make this point so that you know that it's not something a cake it's something uh, they used to do no it's the bible i hope you are comfortable now, when we talk about the anointing, the truth is to be a Christian without the anointing is virtually impossible. Because Jesus, the Son of God, I'm sure by now you know that Christ is not the name of Jesus. Christ is his office. But his office has become like his name. Now, if I'm called Mark and I ask you, who am I? And you tell me, uh, you are Mark. Can I tell you, what a revelation. The guy knows my name. So it's not a revelation that the guy knows my name. But if he mentions something about me which is not known, then it's a revelation. Mark, Matthew 16, verse 15. Oh, do you love Jesus? As I preach and I teach, the power of God is right where you are. The glory of God is right where you are. And he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Jesus is talking to the disciples and said that, who do people say I am? Who do people say? Because people are saying that you are John the Baptist, Elijah. He said that, okay, okay, enough of what people are saying. But you disciples, who do you think I am? The simplest answer was, oh, you are Jesus, because that was his name. But look at the answer. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. So the Christ was not his name. So actually, he's Jesus the Christ. But over time, the Christ has become his surname. But he's the Christ. Does it make sense to you? The word the Christ simply means the Messiah. The Greek is Christos. And the Hebrew is Mashiach. The Messiah. And what does the Messiah mean? The anointed one. So what Peter said was that, you are Jesus the anointed one. Can I get in the Passion Bible? Glory be to God. 
Simon Peter spoke up and said, you are the anointed one, the son of the living God. So to say that Christ means the anointed one. Does it make sense? Look for verse 41. Thank you, Jesus. And devils also came out of many crying and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak. For they knew that he was the Christ. So Jesus was saying that nobody should know I'm the Christ now. But these devils, they know. And they are trying to reveal my undercover <laughs> identity. The devils were, Jesus said, no, no, if I don't shut them, they are going to blow the cover over me. Can I get in the Passion Bible? So the Christ was a special office. Jesus entered in. Demons also came out of many of them. The demons knew that Jesus was the anointed one. Say they knew. They knew. Say they knew. they knew. The knowledge that Jesus is the anointed one does several things. To the wicked, it fights them. To the blessed one, it blesses them. Can I repeat it? When you know Jesus is the anointed one, it depends on where you are. If you are a wicked like the demon, you will have to react and move in the opposite direction. But when you are a son and a child of God, that anointing blesses you. So they shouted, the demons knew that Jesus was the anointed one. So they shouted while coming out, you are the Messiah, the son of El Shaddai. But Jesus rebuked them and commanded them to be shut up and go. If Jesus the Christ, Jesus the anointed one is your brother, you cannot survive without the anointed. You cannot live this well in live this world without. The Bible said how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. How he went about, Acts 10, 38, doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. What the anointing does is that it secures your consciousness that God is with you. And God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. So the truth is, when the anointing or the oil comes upon you, it is not the oil you are getting, it's the Holy Ghost and I repeat. When the oil comes up over your life, what is coming over your life in Reality is the Holy Ghost and power. Do you agree with me? And the truth is you need the Holy Ghost and power. You need it. 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 This is, you need it. That is all you need. It will make life easier. One day, there was a young man. He was called David. He was in the bush. Ignored to take care of sheep. Then Samuel, the prophet came. First Samuel 16. First Samuel 16. Verse 13. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Then Samuel took a horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. The same way we are going to do today. And what happened? And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Hello? Get me this oil. Just one of them. The Bible said, Samuel, pour oil on David. Physically, everybody saw oil. But what happened? Spiritually, what came? Oh, are you sure you are in church today? Physically, it was oil. But spiritually, what came? The Spirit of the Lord. Today, as we anoint you, don't just see oil on your head. Don't be too conscious over your wig or your hairstyle. Just be conscious of the spirit coming over you. Because the spirit is God's power. He's God's ability. So it's not that you didn't bath today or we want to just pomade you with oil. No. It's not the pomade we want to give to you. Is the Holy Spirit which brings a divine empowerment? I'll read a portion of scripture to you and tell you what the anointing does. 
several things it can do. But I just want to give you some, so that at least when you leave this place, you know that something has happened. What to expect? I sure you are ready. The first benefit of the anointing I want to tell you today is that the anointing will bring distinction to you. You are going to be extraordinary by the anointing. Psalm 45 verse 7. Expect it. Expect it. Maru Vrahash. Thou loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God thy God had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. When this anointing comes upon you, you become above thy fellows. Say above thy fellows. Say I am elevated by the anointing. By the anointing you are promoted you are elevated, you ascend by reason of God's power. If you want to be extraordinary, you people can say, we don't know what, what there's something about the guy, it's called the anointing. There is nothing about anybody except the anointing. And today, that anointing is coming over that business. It's coming over your life. It's coming over your children. It's coming over your family. He said, by this anointing, you shall be above thy fellows. Can I get in the NIV? Thank you, Jesus. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions. By. How did God set you above your companions? By anointing you with the oil of joy. So, by the oil, you are set above thy companions. You are going to leave this place knowing that you are above. Not in competition. You didn't make yourself. God did it. Say, I'm above. Whatever you are going to be involved in is going to be above. Mm. Mm. Say, I'm above. He that is from above is above all. Say, by the anointing, I am above. I am promoted. I'm elevated in the name of Jesus. One day's encounter can spare you 10 years of prayer. You want to release your faith today. He has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. The next thing the anointing will do for you, the anointing will preserve you. Say, the anointing will preserve me. Psalm 89 verse 20. This world, you need preservation. Oh, yes, you do. I have found, put your name there. I have found. I have found my servant with my holy oil have i so when god found david the oil came upon him but look at the effects of the oil he puts a colon there with whom my hand shall be established when the anointing comes upon you you are established he said my arm also shall strengthen him next verse the enemy shall not exact upon him and the son of wickedness will not afflict you. It means by the anointing, affliction must end. No, no, no. You see, I understand people fight in dreams. I understand people have struggles in dreams. But I remember the day consciously I sensed God's anointing. This anointing will not permit your enemy to win. The last devil who manipulated you and tormented you at night, I care that devil in the name of Jesus. The enemy shall not exact upon you. Nor the son of wickedness. When you sleep, you wake up and you realize that a devil came to torment you. Get up and get angry. If you know the anointing is upon you. But we have not known the value of this anointing. This anointing impacts to you uncommon boldness against devils. Don't forget that the devil saw the anointing and they begged Jesus. From today, every devil will beg you in the name of Jesus. The anointing did not come to make you a beggar. You are going to be the one they beg. In the name. In the name. I can hear you. In the name. The enemy shall not exact upon you. It doesn't matter. 25,000 people, let them gather. Let them gather and plan against you. The anointed will fight them. You see, at times, I stopped praying against bad physical bad people, spiritual bad people, I deal with them. 
but physical Bible, they, say, they don't like me. They are talking about me. I stopped a long time. Do you know why? By the anointing. The anointing will fight them even when you don't pray. No, no, no. You will not be there. They will be talking about you. You are not there. You don't even know. But the anointing has intelligence and can fight for you. The enemy will not exact upon you. And the son of wickedness cannot afflict you. From today, you em- say, I'm empowered. The last few years, they said, oh, they, are t- they are plotting evil. No, no, no. As they were plotting, the anointing will visit them. Ayapalush. Not the son of wickedness. Don't focus on the enemy. Focus on increasing the anointing. Just increase the anointing. Let them plan. Just increase in the anointing. As you increase the anointing, the enemies will come and bow. I said they will come in. I've had people who have insulted me. They, 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 they came to beg. They said, can you do one or two things for me? I said, wow, I'll do that. No problem. But I knew what happened. This anointing. You say, I'm not ordinary. Not the son of wickedness afflict him. Next. And I will beat down. <laughs> say, I will beat down his foes before his face. And break them that hate him. No, no, no. That, you're not going to do it. Just focus on getting the anointing. God said, once the anointing is on you, I'll go and beat them for you. <laughs> See, your enemies are in trouble from today. I said they are in trouble. God is going to beat them. Listen to me. If God is going to do the beating, you know they will get a good beating. He's a good God. Whatever he does, he does it very good. <laughs> you didn't get it. He's a good God. God, he, he's, he's good at anything. So if he's going to beat, it's going to be a good beating. <laughs> He said, I will plague them that hate him. Have you forgotten how the Israelites were tormented? And overnight, plagues came upon them. The Israelites they didn't know even where the plagues would come from. By reason of the anointing, plagues visited them. Some people are going to call you tonight and beg you. Some people are going to see your face and run away. By reason of the anointing, in the name of Jesus. Psalm 105, give me verse, verse 13. This anointing will preserve you it will defend you Amen. where we are living in this world you need the anointing you need it you, you want to be conscious be conscious of it and when they went from one nation to another they were going about from one hotel to another hotel one neighborhood to another neighbor one company to another they were just going from one kingdom to another people he suffered no man to do them wrong this anointing will not permit people to just do you wrong and be okay. No. No, no. That they hate you and they are okay. It won't happen by, by the anointing. No, no. You want to be conscious of this blessedness. Yes, yes. I understand they are devils, physical and spiritual. But increase in the anointing. He, he suffered them. He permitted no one. Yeah. He reproved kings for their sake. Can I get in the NLT verse 14? Shout, I'm anointed. Are you sure you want the blessed? Say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Shout, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You did not get born again just to run away to heaven and on the last day. He, he, he rapture. No, no. You must live like a king. By reason of the anointing. The Bible said they held Jesus and he walked in the midst of them. Question is, the guy who wanted to kill, when he was going, how come they all didn't rush on him? They held him. He walked out of the middle of them and said, bye-bye, I will see you. My time is not yet up. And they couldn't do anything. Oh, lift up your right and say, I'm anointed. Shout, I'm anointed. Say, the anointing is upon my life. You, you see, I just have a few minutes. I'm going to lay hands on everyone, so let me just focus. I wanted to tell you stories. Yet, he did not let anyone oppress them. He said, he did not let anyone oppress them. Who? I said, when the oil comes over your life, the Holy Spirit is a person. When he comes, he said, he did not let anyone oppress them. Whether alive or in a dream, no. He did not allow it. He won kings on their behalf. No, no, no. People might be talking about you. God can go and warn them. Oh, yes. Some of them in dreams. Have you forgotten how Abimelech wanted to take Abraham's wife? Abraham had lied. It didn't matter. The guy was anointed. God said, please, please, that guy, he's a prophet. 
if you tie the wife today anyone who will touch your wife <laughs> anyone who will touch your husband don't fight your battles physically but pastor they are no 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 are you anointed and they are taking your husband and your wife and you are just watching you know, you, because you take the battle for yourself that is your problem you think you can no you can't do you can't do what you can do don't think you can monitor you can't do it give your matter to god Today I'm talking about the anointing. Nobody will tempt me to go anywhere. He said he won kings. He won kings on their behalf. He didn't say you go and warn them. You don't pick them. Don't go and warn them. He said he won kings. Because you've been warning them, God has stopped warning them for you. Next verse. Why did he do all that for them? See, touch not. And do my prophets now? I told you before, you're a prophet, true or false? When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you, you prophesy, you're a prophet, although you don't have the title or in the earth, but you're a prophet. And the Bible said, Touch not this blessing, it's not for pastors only. So he said, Touch not my anointed, whether with your hand or with your mouth, and do my prophets no harm. Hmm. See, touch not my anointed, say, I'm touch not. Say, I am touched not. There's a cartoon called The Untouchables. Say, Untouchables. Have you watched that cartoon? When you go, go and watch it, they are Untouchables. It's called The Untouchables. Say, I'm Untouchable. Because of the anointing. What I'm telling you is true. It works. <laughs> Somebody said, Anointed cartoons. Say, touch not my anointing. So, the anointing, I told you, it will set you apart. The anointing number two will make you untouchable. It will preserve you. So, you want to know that I'm anointed, I'm untouchable in the name of Jesus. The enemy cannot exact upon me. First Samuel 10 verse 1. Let me rush now. Glory be to God. Then someone took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, is it not because the Lord had anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? The next thing is that the anointing will make you a captain of life. I said the anointing will make you a leader it will make you a captain of life this guy was looking for donkeys but by reason of the anointing he became captain <laughs> is it not because the lord has anointed the captain over his inheritance give me the NIV glory be to god then someone took a flask of olive oil and poured it on Saul's head and kissed him saying has not the lord anointed you ruler over his inheritance the anointing will make you a ruler shout i'm a ruler shout it i'm a ruler i'm a leader i'm a captain in the name of jesus let's say in the niv next verse what would the anointing do again for you when you leave me today you will meet two men near rachel's tomb at zelza on the border of benjamin they will say to you the donkeys you set out to look for have been found the anointing will bring about recovery and restoration. Amen. I said the anointing will bring about recovery and shouted recovery and restoration. Lift up your right hand. So whatever I lost in my life, I get back. I demand recovery, restoration by reason of the holy anointing oil in the name of Jesus. So, Saul was ordinary. The anointing made the guy a captain. Number two, the anointing brought the guy recovery and restoration. Next verse. Next verse. He said, then you will go from there until you reach the great tree of Tabor. Three men going up to worship God at Bethel. With you will meet you there. One will be carrying three young goats. Look at three men. The first one has three young goats. Another three loaves of bread. And another a skin of wine. Next they will greet you and offer you two loaves of bread which you will accept from them question three men carrying three loaves of bread it means one is for all of them is that not correct so if you want to help somebody just take one and divide it into half and give the guy half so someone said no because of the anointing when they meet you they will give you two the three of them will share one the anointing produces uncommon favor Saul has been walking and the Bible said he had nothing to eat. 
by reason of the anointing suddenly the guy who had nothing received two loaves the anointing brings supernatural provision and supernatural supplies receive it right now in the name of jesus lift up your right hand say father by reason of the anointing i'm empowered i'm strengthened i'm energized in the name of jesus i hope you enjoyed this video and i believe that you were blessed if um, you were blessed by this video make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend and also make sure that you like the video so that youtube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message if you have any question please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you and also if you are watching this video and you don't know jesus christ ask the lord and personal savior i want you to make that decision just contact us in the description call us and let us lead you to receive jesus christ as your lord and personal savior and lastly make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded you can be notified thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section bye